Hello everyone, welcome to my first lecture on HVTC transmission. Today we will discuss about history of HVTC transmission and its comparison with AGB-AC transmission. So here are some books. There are textbooks of HVTC transmission by Kamaksia and Kamaraju by Tata Macro Hill Education Publishers and there is a BTC power transmission system by KR Padir by Willingstone Limited Publication and here are some reference books you can use so let's talk about historical sketch so here we can see in the timeline the evolution of power system how it grew from what it was to what it is today in late 1870s commercial use of electricity started in 1882 first electric power system which includes generator cable fuse load designed by Thomas Alva Edison at Pearl Street Station in New York. It was DC system. Okay, so AC was introduced by Tesla, Nikola Tesla, and the system proposed by Edison was DC system, low voltage 110 volt. Underground cable is used to distribute the power to consumers. Only 59 consumers are benefited by this low voltage DC system. Incandescent lamps are used as a load. <coughs> in 1884, motors were developed by Frank Spargu. After the invention of motors, electricity is used more effectively or it was appreciated. In 1886, the limitations of DC that is high losses voltage drop transformation of voltage was required okay so the other limitations or you can say other limitations of DC was a transformer and AC distribution was developed by Stanley of Westinghouse in 1889 first AC transmission system in USA between Willamette Falls and Portland origin it was for one single phase 4 kV over 21 km before that in the year of 1888 Nikola Tesla developed polyphase system and had patents of generator, motor, transformer, transmission lines. Later Westinghouse bought it. In 1890 controversy on whether industry should standardize AC or DC that is Edison DC system or Westinghouse AC system which was invented by Nikola Tesla. Later because of features of AC system it's dominated voltage increase was possible simpler and cheaper generators and motors because you see in AC generator motors there are no contacting parts in DC generator motor there are brushes which is connected contacted with the rotor and which generate heat and which have a so the DC motor generator have a need a high maintenance okay so HVTC transmission was designed by a French engineer René Thury. Simultaneously, AC system was developed slowly. In between 1880 and 1911, at least 11 Thury systems were installed in Europe, and the prominent was Motors to Lyons, France, in 1906. It comprises 180 km. 4.5 km underground cable, 4.3 megawatt, 57.6 kilovolt, and 75 ampere. 
So features of the system was DC series generator were used, constant control current mode. In 1920, transverter, which are mechanical converter, polyphase transformer were developed. Again, AC system dominated. In 1938, all the theory system was dismantled because in DC system, we need frequent maintenance cost also is not effective. Again, AC revolution back to 1950. In the year of 1950, mercury arc bulbs, which was bulky converter, it was possible to convert AC to DC. In 1954, first HBDC system between Sweden and Gotland Island was commissioned by cable. Conversion carried out by mercury arc rectifier. Again, people think about DC transmission because of the limitation in AC system. So here are some comparison, the comparison between HVAC and HVDC systems. HVAC system transmission system is having several limitations like line length, uncontrolled power flow, over or low voltages during lightly or overloaded conditions, stability problem, faulty isolation, etc. The advantage of HVDC is the ability to transmit large amount of power over long distances with lower capital cost and with lower losses than AC. HVDC transmission allows efficient use of energy sources remote from the load centers depending on voltage level and construction details. Losses are quoted as about 3% per 1000 km. In a number of applications, HVDC is more effective than AC transmission. Examples include undersea cables, where high capacitance cause additional AC losses. You see, the AC transmission system has inductance the wire that carries the current has its own inductance and capacitance but DC system DC conductors are free from it okay so where uh, under C cables some examples were under C cables where high capacitance causes additional AC losses for example 250 km Baltic cable between Sweden and Germany 600 km Nornet cable between Norway and the Netherlands. In HVDC long power transmission without intermediate straps, for example in remote areas. Okay. Increasing the capacity of an existing power grid in situation where additional wires, wires are difficult or expensive to install. Power transmission and stabilization between unsynchronized AC distribution system. So whenever we install a new AC distribution system we have to synchronize those systems with already installed system for instance the <coughs> three phases that is red blue yellow they alternate at different instances compared to the alteration in the system in the bus bar so there are methods to synchronize those rotations in three phase system and also there is stabilization problem because three phase system are tend to be more unstable compared to this system so connecting a remote generating plant to the distribution grid was easier in DC system, DC transmission line, especially HVDC transmission line. Asynchronous operation possible between regions having different electrical parameters. Facilitate power transmission between different countries that use AC at different voltages or frequencies. 
reducing line cost, fewer conductors, thinner conductors, since HVDC does not suffer from skin effect. So, what is skin effect? Skin effect is the tendency of the current to remain near its surface. So, if we take a cross section of a conductor, okay, when it is carrying the current, we will see that the current density near the center of the conductor is less and density near the skin of the conductor that is outer side of the conductor is more this is called skin effect so HVDC systems does not have this effect but AC systems does and with increase in voltages this effect become prominent So practically, in these days, where do we use HVDC systems? So after a certain distance, HVDC systems becomes more cost effective compared to AC systems. Okay, so at lower distances, if we try to use DC, we can. But as an engineer, we have to look at the cost of the installation and as well as losses, the maintenance and in that case the AC system is more efficient but after a certain distance the cost of the DC become less compared to cost of the AC and that distance after which it occurs it is called break even distance so here we can see a distance versus cost graph and you can understand that after break even distance the cost is more in case of AC because it was less when the distance was less than break even distance. Comparison of HVDC continues. So no next restriction on line length has no reactance in DC lines. So we have previously studied power system and in power system 1 we have studied things like string efficiency and inductive reactances and we have determined the inductive reactance of the line conductors. But in this case, in case of DC, it is no longer valid because DC systems or DC conduct DC power does not have reactances. HVDC can carry more power per conductor because for a given power rating, the constant voltage in a DC line is lower than peak voltage in an AC line. As you can see from this graph, so how do we calculate RMS value? RMS value is the equivalent DC value. So suppose we have to pick a conductor. So for a in case of AC, HVAC, for a given power rating or peak value of voltage, the RMS value is less. Okay. So for the given RMS value as the peak value is more so we have to comp so we have to choose a conductor which is which is capable of carrying more voltage which include more cost but in case of dc the rms value is same as the its peak value okay so the conductor cost is less in this case hvdc systems have low losses AC current will struggle against inertia in the line, electrical resistance, inductance, reactive power, these are present in AC current system, okay. In direct current roll along the line, opposing force friction, electrical resistance is present, but other re re restriction like inductance and reactive power is not present, so that is advantage of 
this distance distance as well as amount of power determine the choice of dc over ac so how much power we have to transmit or how long the transmission line will be detect determine whether we have to select ac or dc okay as on the right side graph we can see that with increase in power okay the relative cost decreases in both hvac and hvdc hvdc single conductor case and hvac three conductor case okay so both decreases but after the distance a certain distance hvdc will decrease more compared to hvac so economically hvdc will be more efficient direct current con conserves forest and saves land the towers of the dc lines are narrower simpler cheaper compared to the towers of the ac line okay so here in this both pictures we can see hvac and hvdc hvac on the left and hvdc on the right side so you can see hvdc needs narrower simpler towers compared to ac lines okay here are some pictures it is ac transmission line corridor it is called corridor because there are couple of transmission line towers are there so more places needed needed to transmit ac power but in case of dc as you can see from the next picture it needs narrower place okay so uh, this is an advantage so lesser corona loss than hvac at same voltage conductor diameter and less radio interference okay so in case of ac the corona loss what is corona loss corona loss is the corona loss occurs when suppose there are two conductors at high voltages and because of those high voltages the air between those conductors become ionized and because of this ionization there is a the current passes through this air and it produces light and sound and this and this is called corona loss okay so because of this corona this light and sound the loss occurs in electrical system okay but in case of hvdc there is corona loss but it is comparatively low direction of power flow can be changed very quickly dc system in this system we can change the direction of power flow very easily so you can say what about ac like ac is always changing so what is the necessity of changing of direction and what is the meaning in ac system of changing of direction of power flow but remember there is also reactive power and we are talking about active power like from generating one side generating station to load and vice versa next hvdc has great reliability that is bipolar dc is more reliable than three phase hvdc okay so dc requires less insulation as the peak voltage we have seen from the previous slides the peak voltage is same as rms voltage of dc so for same voltage conduction the dc hvdc system wires requires less insulation an optimized dc link has smaller tower than an optimized dc link of equal capacity dc line in parallel with ac link so hvdc rather than hvac hvdc is cheaper in long haul bulk power transmission asynchronous link accurate control of power flow both magnitude and direction fault isolation and improved link stability so these are the advantage of hvdc
compared to HVAC. So thank you everyone.